Now that's a tough one to answer with just a straight yes or no. I understand that. The Bible tells us we should always be prepared to share the hope that is in us, as Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Our lives and the way we live should always provide a witness to what we believe. 2 Timothy 4, chapter 2 says that we should be ready to preach the word in and out of season. So when it is convenient for us, in those times when it's not so convenient. So in a way, you could say no to our question that we should never take a break from spreading the gospel. But in the few verses that we're going to look at today in Mark chapter 6, Jesus tells the apostles to rest for a while. After they tell them all that they had done when he sent them out to, to preach, to, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, as recorded in verses 7 through 13 of Mark chapter 6. So in this case, in today's reading, yes, it is okay to take that break from spreading the word. But there's a big difference in what the world may see as rest and resting from what kind of activity and what Jesus is telling his apostles now in how to rest and to rest from the work that they have been doing for him. So let's pray. and We're going to take a closer look at uh, our verses for today. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this morning, Lord. And Father, I just uh, thank you, Father, for, uh, for the words that Joe shared, Lord. And I thank you, Father, how much they have to tie into what we're talking about today, Lord. That there is that time to go out and be sent. There's that time to come back and, and take that rest with the Lord. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for, for Joe sharing, Lord. I thank you for his heart, for the, for the lost, Lord. And I just ask, Father, again, that uh, all of us would just uh, take a look inside ourselves, Lord, and, and see if this is uh, something that the Lord is calling us to do. And, Father, I just uh, thank you again, Father, for, uh, for the ladies' retreat, Lord, for the good time they had as they rested in you this, this past few days, Lord, and, and be with each other, Lord. So I thank you for that blessing for them, Lord. And Father, uh, we do lift up our brother uh, Tony, Lord, as he is in the hospital right now and, and, and is struggling, Lord, with, uh, with some anxiousness some anxiety. Um, so, Lord, we just ask that you just to give him a peace, Lord. We know he's a faithful believer, Lord, faithful servant of yours, Lord. We thank you, Father, for faithful servants like uh, Doug, who are providing rides and rides to the airport and pickups and all this kind of stuff for Joe or for Tony, Lord. So we thank you, Father, for our brother Doug, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Father, that uh, Tony's sister, Terry, Lord, can, can, can visit here and also just be in that hospital room when we're praying for, for Tony, Lord, so she can see, uh, you know, the, the Lord's at work. So Father, we ask, Lord, through, through this, all of this, Lord, that you would touch her heart. So again, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your, for your word, Lord. And even just these few short verses a day, Lord, we thank you, Father, for the, for the message that you have for all of us as, as believers, Lord, as faithful believers, as we go out and spread your gospel, Lord. So, Father, we ask your blessing on this morning, Lord, from, from what Joe shared to our givings and offerings, Lord, that we wise to it to those things, Lord, and now to what your word has to tell us this morning, Lord. So, Father, I ask, Lord, that you just bless this time, Lord, and it would indeed bring glory to your name. We thank you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the verses we're in today are in Mark chapter 6. They're right in between the verses dealing with the death of John the Baptist, which we read about, and the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. So these are two very well-known stories, the death of John the Baptist and the feeding of the 5,000. But these few verses that we're focusing on today, they're kind of kind of shoved in between there. They kind of almost get lost in a way. And, and I have to be honest with you, the, the more I meditated on these verses over the past you know, week or so, the more they're just speaking to me. And sometimes that's the way the Lord's word works. It might just be those couple of verses that really speak to you. So hopefully I can convey that to you this morning. So the verses that we're going to read now are what happened after the apostles returned from their first missionary trip that Jesus sent them out on back in verses 7 through 13 in Mark chapter 6. So this is what happens. This is the conversation when they come back from the mission field. Starting with Mark chapter 6 verse 30. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had done taught so an emphasis there on what they had done but also what they had taught now i like how it wasn't the apostles asking jesus what he had been doing remember they've been gone for some time and maybe they'll be curious about what he had been doing but they were telling jesus what they had been doing after he sent them out for me i probably would have been asking jesus especially if he's right in front of me hey what have you been doing i want to hear what you've been doing I would think it would have been much more exciting to hear from him than me to tell him what I've been up to. But that's not what happened here. Jesus wanted to hear from them, his disciples, and what they had been doing to spread 
his message to spread the gospel. And I think this verse is, is a picture-perfect verse of a description of how Jesus calls us to be part of spreading the gospel. We're not called to be bystanders. We are to be involved in the spreading of the message that Jesus has given us. And I think this verse gives us a lot of insight into how Jesus trained his first disciples and how we should be trained up in the same way. And he wants, he wants to hear from us. He wants to hear how we're doing in the spreading of his gospel today. And that means that we should be doing just that, spreading the gospel. You know, from what Tony taught last week, we all have those opportunities to share at some level at some time. The Lord Jesus wants to hear from you about those opportunities. And I am sure, like with the apostles, some of those opportunities went great and turned out great, but some probably don't. And that's fine. I was thinking about this, these guys sitting around telling Jesus what they had been doing, and it kind of made me think about, have you ever been around like a little kid when they're telling you something that's very exciting to them? How excited they get about it. You know, it may be a story about a birthday party they went to, or, or maybe a trip to Disneyland, but it could even be something as simple as this dog or cat they saw that was doing something they thought was funny. I mean, baby John, when he watches these cat videos on the phone, he goes nuts because he thinks they're so funny. So that's how excited I think that these guys were. They were so excited, these kids are, to tell you that sometimes they forget to breathe here and there. Eventually they just tire themselves out in telling you because they're so excited. That's the kind of picture I have of the apostles telling Jesus their stories of their mission trip. You know, one of them is about to, to finish their story. Another one jumps in and starts telling his story. Maybe they're even talking over each other. Till finally there was maybe just silence except for the sound of them trying to, to catch their breath. I don't think I'm too far off base here. Remember, they had been preaching and, and casting out demons and healing the sick, so I think they would have been very excited about those things that they were sharing now with Jesus and each other. But at the end of this, if you want to call it debriefing, if you will, I think Jesus see, he sees how exhausted they are. And that leads him to say what he says next in verse 31. So now in chapter, Mark chapter 6, verses 31 and 32. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. So first off, I think their mission trip must have been very successful in mobilizing people now that want to hear about Jesus. The verse says that many were coming and going. And there is no doubt that the apostles were keeping very busy. As the text says, they didn't even have time to eat. I know when I get busy at work, and maybe for some of you also too, when you get busy with things, you can sometimes just forget to eat. Or you don't have time to eat. But, you know, you can only function so long by skipping meals because you're going to run out of energy, maybe get grumpy, which I kind of do if I don't eat, you know, so you want to make sure and take that time. You can only operate off adrenaline for so long, and of course Jesus knew that, and he saw the exhaustion of his apostles. But I really like how he says they should rest, and I really like how it is expressed in the NIV. In the NIV it says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus says, come with me and rest. Come with me and rest. He didn't tell them to go off by themselves and be alone with their thoughts or even with each other, but he says, come with me. You know, sometimes when life, you know, gets hectic, we may, we may just want to get away by ourselves or maybe with just a, a few people that we're close to. But true rest and peace is found only in fellowship with Jesus. And the word deserted is used here in the New King James. You know, a desert indicates an isolated place without the normal distractions of everyday life. You know, if you drive out of town here in Vegas, you can quickly see the remoteness of the desert that's all around us. And I think that's the idea trying to be conveyed here. The apostles. And of course us they needed to get to a, a remote place where the distractions weren't but alone time with Jesus can be found there 
You know, we all need to ask ourselves this question. Do I have this place where I can go to be with Jesus? And if I do, do I go there on a regular basis? If you don't, you know, I encourage you to, to find that place and find that time. And of course, you know, it doesn't physically need to be a desert or, or the top of a mountain or somewhere you have to get to by boat like Jesus and the, and the apostles in this story. But it should be a place and a time, even in our own homes, where we won't be distracted, but we can focus on Jesus and him alone during that quiet time. And that time is also to be used not just to talk with Jesus and hear from him, but to rest as he was telling the apostles. Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus says, Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, Jesus knows our limits as he knew the apostles' limits. We can't be working all the time, even when it comes to working for the kingdom. We all need to balance out work and rest, time spent with others and time spent with Jesus. The disciples needed rest and Jesus had compassion on them. You know, God gave the Jews the Sabbath for resting and we can use that same principle as New Testament believers. That was a day set aside for rest and worship. So our time of rest with him should be a form of worship to him. And I know many people, including my wife, that set aside a day every week for that purpose. And that's a good idea for all of us. So getting back to our original question for today, is it okay to take a rest from spreading the gospel? I would have to say yes from what we just read. But I think the big difference is how we spend that time in rest and who we spend it with. And I think a great example of that is that current ladies retreat we've been talking about that some of our ladies are on right now. You know, the title for their retreat is Jesus, My Best Friend. We all probably like to spend time with our best friend. So why not spend that time with Jesus? You know, Jesus valued relationships more than, than most of us realize. But when you read his word, when you read what he did with his apostles, he valued relationships and the time it took to build those relationships. The ladies retreat it was never about where they would go. Where's the best beach? Where's the best shopping? Where's this? Where's that? It was never about that. I, I know that because I was involved in those discussions, but it was about who they were going to spend time with. It wasn't the where, it was the who. And just like the example we just read in Mark today, they heard Jesus call to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. They are together as the apostles were without the distractions of everyday life, but the focus is on spending time with Jesus. And I, I want to encourage the men here, too. You know, we're trying to arrange a men's retreat. It's funny. I mentioned men's retreat to Doug. Doug says, men don't retreat. We advance. So we're going to call it like a men's advance, not a men's retreat. And we want to do that before the end of the year. And I've been, I've been talking with Dennis about some locations. Uh, I've been talking with uh, Rich about some locations. So um, we're working on that right now. And i got to share with you guys there are many places we can go to do manly things like hike or backpack, which I found out I'm not too manly after all anyway. We can go places and throw axes. We can fish, we can camp, we can shoot guns, we can shoot bows. But the real reason should be as the apostles did here with Jesus. That's the real reason to get away. Many of those other things, you know, we can do any time. But getting away with your brothers with the expressed purpose of spending time together with Jesus, that can be a rare occurrence. I'm gonna let the guys know more details as you put this together. Again, we're hoping to do this before we get into the holidays, so please keep that in prayer, guys and ladies, please. But getting back to the story, if you know the story here, 
we're just talking about. You know, once Jesus and the apostles did get across the lake to that deserted place, you read the story, you'll know that the, the rest didn't last long at all. Just as we started this message with the scripture about preaching in and out of season, to always be prepared to share when it is convenient and especially when it is not so convenient. And you know, there's another lesson that totally for all of us, but as soon as they get across the lake, they're already mobbed. But for today, you know, I want us to focus on what we talked about today and focus on what we discussed today. And I know I've mentioned this quote before. I can't remember exactly where I heard it before. I think it was a, a, a pastor that spoke at Destiny down the way here. But I think it's very appropriate with today's message. And that is that Jesus was always busy, but he was never in a hurry. No person who has ever walked this earth had more to do than the one who said, I must be about my father's business. And yet that one never seemed to be in a hurry. Even here in Mark, between all that was going on all around him, he knew he had to take the time with his apostles to rest, to build those relationships and to rest. He called them to himself and told them to rest with me, he said. Come with me and rest, he said. In our busy world, even when it comes to doing the Lord's work, we must learn not to get past the Lord, to hurry past the Lord. So I want to encourage each and every one of us in these three areas today. You know, we read today how the apostles came back from doing the work Jesus had set them out to do. Jesus has called us to be active in spreading the gospel also. And if you are doing that, that is great. But if you know you aren't, if you're lacking there, you need to work on it. There's no other way to say it. And in the end, Jesus desires to hear from you about your experiences in sharing his word. How amazing is that? Just like he did with his apostles here. So that'd be first. Now, if you're doing the first part, then I'm asking you, please don't hesitate or hesitate to take that time of rest with Jesus. Just make sure it is time with Jesus that you're taking advantage of, whether by yourself or in a group of believers like the ladies, for example. And finally, lastly, look to Jesus as your example. Just like Jesus, we can always be busy spreading the gospel, but take the time also not to be in a hurry when it comes to others and their needs. Jesus took that precious time with those that he desired to be close to, just as he will do with us today. But you need to listen to that voice when he says, come with me to a quiet place and get some rest. Come with me to a quiet place and get some rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again for your word, Lord, just in these few verses, Lord. Again, we see the, the compassion of Christ in all of Mark, Lord. We can see the compassion that, that you had on your apostles, Lord, as they were just exhausted from doing the work you called them to do, Lord. So, Father, I thank you that we have this example in Scripture of taking that time of, of a rest, Lord. Yes, we should be spreading the gospel. Our lives should declare the gospel. But there's also that time when Jesus even told his apostles, come with me and rest. So, Father, I'd ask, Lord, that all of us would listen for those words from Jesus, Lord. And that we wouldn't rest the way the world would have us rest or, or rest from things of the world, Lord. But this is specifically about resting from, from doing your kingdom work, Lord. And that time of rest is a time spent with you. And what a precious time it can be. So, Father, I ask for all of us, Lord, that, that number one, Lord, we would be spreading the gospel we would understand the calling to do that as Joe shared but Father also as we can see in this example as the apostles came back from spreading the gospel Jesus encouraged them to come away with him and to rest so we'd all be able to take take that example Lord into our walks as well Lord so Father again I thank you for your word Lord and what it teaches us how it speaks to us Lord 
And again, I pray for the ladies' safe return from, from their retreat, Lord, and I do pray for, for the men, Lord, that we'd be able to, to do something similar, as the apostles did here with their Lord and Savior. We'd be able to do that soon. So again, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the time in your word, Lord. We thank you for the time of, of Joe sharing, Lord. And, and we also ask your blessing on our time of fellowship before we leave here today. So again, we thank you and we love you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, Brady's out of town.